was an idealist. He spent his entire life forming and developing ideas to create a utopian vision of urban and regional form. By means of his writings, Mumford positioned himself as a transmitter of ideas. Through transmission, Mumford developed his own interdisciplinary thoughts drawn from technology, the social sciences, ecology, and cultural criticisms. This interdisciplinary approach enabled Mumford to envision the perfect region that combined city and country, equity and justice. Louis Mumford was born in 1895 in New York City. Raised in poverty by his mother Elvina, Mumford spent most of his childhood living in a rundown apartment while working to support his family. Mumford's childhood circumstances of social marginality and emotional uncertainties greatly affected his ideals and beliefs later in life. Though Mumford was vital to the evolution of planning as a theory and a discipline, throughout his life he referred to himself as a writer, not a planner, scholar, historian, architectural critic, or philosopher. While Mumford is often regarded as one of the greatest academic scholars of the 20th century, he never obtained a college degree. Mumford attended the City College of New York, but was forced to drop out after he was diagnosed with tuberculosis. Mumford later attended classes at Columbia and New York University, but he was more interested in the world of books and the city itself, regarding them as his true alma mater. Mumford referred to himself as a child of the city and spent most of his free time exploring, sketching, and visioning a greater New York. New York exerted a greater and more constant influence on him than did his own family, serving to shape his regional and idealistic theories. In 1923, Mumford co-founded the Regional Planning Association of America with colleagues Clarence Stein, Benton McKay, Henry Wright, and several other influential individuals of the 20th century. Lewis Mumford and the RPAA combined ideas from Ebenezer Howard's Garden Cities, Patrick Getty's Regional Vision, and Clarence Stein's Communitarian Regionalism to set the standard for regional thinking and practice in the United States. These ideas then fused into the concept of the city in the region. The city in the region intended to disperse population to smaller towns throughout the area. These towns were to be self-sufficient, cooperative commonwealths that supported equity and communication, yet were linked to the greater web of cities. The city in the region would integrate town and country while protecting the natural environment. With this proposal, Mumford and the RPAA hoped to establish a new way of life. Mumford desired a new landscape pattern that would allow the American people to live and partner with the natural environment. He planned to accomplish this by designing communities surrounded by green belts of public land. This would not only bring the people back to the meadows, fields, and woods, but it would also preserve the town's shape and control growth. He aspired for walkable towns by placing homes close to schools, public meeting halls, theaters, and markets. If successful, Humphrey's idea would bring order, fulfillment, and a better age to the American people. In 1931, Thomas Adams unveiled the regional plan for New York with great anticipation and excitement. It was viewed in the professional community as the pinnacle of what planning could accomplish. Only one man could find fault with it, Lewis Mumford. Mumford viewed the regional plan in New York as advancing poor policies and a poor conception of planning, namely the lack of regionalism and decentralization. He believed the plan failed to deliver a regionalist vision, one of his key tenets. He saw the plan as being developed by a group of technicians and not basing decisions on specific characteristics that shape the community. Mumford valued the social survey far more than statistical predictions based on narrow evidence. Growth is determined by the current cultural, moral, aesthetic choices, not by past social and economic forces. Mumford wanted public engagement first and foremost. The plan should begin with housing in the local community, not with the prestige of the metropolis. He saw one of the great failings to be the lack of public housing. One must finally judge the regional plan, not by its separate details, but by its drift. Thus, the report talks about garden cities, but drifts towards further metropolitan centralization. It talks neighborhood planning and better housing, but drifts toward our present chaotic methods of supplying both. It talks of objective standards of air and light for building, but drifts toward over-intensive uses of even suburban areas. Lewis Mumford. These criticisms led Mumford to break with the RPA practice of building relationships and fostering cooperation with other planning institutions. 
Other members of the RPAA, such as Clarence Stein and Henry Wright, thought that Mumford's approach to the regional plan of New York might make them appear to be inflexible and doctrinaire. Needless to say, the RPA disbanded a year later. Even though it may appear that Mumford hated the regional plan in New York, there were two aspects he liked, the increase in parkland and the emphasis on decentralization. But Mumford had to be Mumford. The regional plan of New York lacks the very essence of a good plan, the sense of alternative possibilities. Lewis Mumford. Mumford's original proposition stated that the automobile and technology would bring new opportunities to American cities. While it drastically changed the American landscape, it did so at the cost of social equity and the environment. Mumford came to hate the motor car and all it had done to America. Mumford's idealistic views of the city and the region never actualized. While the city dispersed this plan, it did so at an immense rate with little consideration of the natural environment. Thomas Adams' regional plan led development and was particularly successful in its highway, bridge, and tunnel proposals, all elements that aided the automobile. While many aesthetic ideals of the city and the region are present in American cities today, Mumford's advocacy planning ideals of social justice, participation, and equity were unsuccessful. His prescription of state-aided new cities and the rebuilding of blighted areas remained on paper. Mumford believed that if meaningful social and political change is possible, it is achieved through imaginative vision. If his ideas and theories were played out as proposed, our cities and nation would be much different today. Younger, I wish that I knew what.